I finally got a chance to attend my very first CES out in Las Vegas, which 141,000 people attended from all over the world this year. And there were some really interesting upgrades in the world of tech. There were a ton of robotics and a whole lot of AI. And I mean a lot of AI. I even saw AI mattress and AI water. Thanks for NVIDIA for flying me and my team out and sponsoring a portion of this video. Let me go through the list of the top 25 coolest tech I saw at CES. Now the event kicked off with one of the most epic keynotes I've ever seen, the CEO of NVIDIA, Jensen Hong, gave a two hour presentation that felt like a rock concert. I think 14, 15,000 people stood in line to see this. And he opened it up with the very first item on my list. NVIDIA GeForce RTX 50 series GPUs. These were brand new GPUs. The RTX 5090, this is the one I was most interested in, the top of the line GPU. This had twice the performance of the RTX 4090. And these GPUs came in four different models. I'll put them here on screen and some of the pricing here too. So the RTX 5070 starts at $549. Now I run a lot of AI models locally. So a computer with a GPU that could handle that obviously gonna be a huge bonus. And if you do any type of video editing and for gaming, obviously a huge upgrade. Next, Jensen also introduced something called NVIDIA Cosmos. This is an entire new platform designed to accelerate the advancement of physical AI systems. So for autonomous cars, for robotics. Now, one thing that really stood out to me as part of this platform was something called generative world foundation models. Now, these are basically models that could replicate an actual physical environment in the virtual world and predict the future. Developers use Cosmos to generate worlds for reinforcement learning AI feedback to improve policy models or to test and validate model performance, even across multi-sensor views. Cosmos can generate tokens in real time, bringing the power of foresight and multiverse simulation to AI models generating every possible future to help the model select the right path. Working with the world's developer ecosystem, NVIDIA is helping advance the next wave of physical AI. I mean, that is just absolutely wild. And NVIDIA obviously have a bunch of other updates. I have a couple more coming up, including a desktop AI supercomputer. And I'll put a link to the entire keynote in the description that CS posted on YouTube. I think you'll really enjoy it. Now let's get into robotics at number three, Unitree G1 Humanoid Robot. This is a $16,000 robot that has a form of a human, moves like a human. It stands about four foot three inches tall. It's about 77 pounds. And I guess it's designed for manufacturing, maybe potential home use in the future. Right now, I saw it do all kinds of fun things, but I didn't see it do anything really practical in their demo, but obviously, this was a big hit at CES. I got to even interact with it kind of one-on-one -on, -one on the second day outside of the show floor. Pretty cool. Now next, Unitree also introduced GoTo, which is a robot dog. And this one's only 1600 bucks, which is far cheaper than any type of robot dog that I've seen in the market so far. Again, for personal use, maybe some like commercial applications. And this one had all kinds of AI features so you could talk to it via voice, you had a remote control for the LiDAR, and they did a really fun demo where he kind of danced in a group. He stood on two legs, did all kinds of fancy spinning around. But again, for practical applications, I'm not sure exactly what I would do with it, but it's super cool. Now, next one was one of the most viral hits at CES, Omnia Smart Mirror. Now, this is a concept mirror for 360 degree health monitoring. So this will help you keep track of your heart rate, sleep quality, metabolic health. And the way it does this is it combines AI with health sensors and data integrations, and then uses a personal AI assistant to kind of walk through it, give you personalized advice, help you go through your health data a little bit better. I got to test this out for myself. Really interesting. 
I just don't think this is something that's going to be rolling out anytime soon. That's why it was a concept. And at some point in the future, I could see all of us having some sort of a scale or some kind of a health monitoring that comes with this full length mirror. But I think to make this affordable, it's going to be a few years down the road. Now, there was a TechSuit Pro. If you're into VR, this is from a company called Behaptics. And this changes the entire VR gaming experience because you could actually feel the games. This is compatible with the Meta Quest, with Steam VR, with PS VR 2, and it's compatible across 280 games right now. And Kevin from Futurepedia, who I went to the conference with, he actually tested it out and he said it was really cool. He had a dial for intensity, so if you don't want it to be too intense or if you want to max it out to get the most feedback, this is a haptic vest. So you're going to feel all the things that are taking place in the game. They had different accessories for it. And this is available right now on their website. They come in different packages here. I'll put the different prices and bundles here on screen. Now, NVIDIA had another update called AI Blueprints for Agentic AI. And these are basically workflows designed to help developers create and deploy custom AI agents that could help with reasoning, planning, taking actions, and developers can build AI agents that act as knowledge robots. They could analyze ton of documents, summarize insights, but specifically with agents, you could perform complex tasks. So Jensen had this really cool moment where he was saying that imagine the IT department could be the HR department that manages all kinds of different AI agents, and he had different agents assigned to very specific tasks, they work together under the same team. So obviously, if you know anything about AI agents, this is clearly the path to using them in practical applications. Now, Honda also introduced two new EVs. I actually walked into a whole show floor that looked like the auto show. But in 2026, Honda is going to release something called Zero Saloon. This is a really slick looking sedan. And something called Zero SUV. This is just an electric SUV that has more of a traditional SUV design but the sedan this looks more like a lamborghini at first glance and again these are right now prototypes so i'm not sure if the release in 2026 is going to be this exact same layout from what i saw online these are going to start at 50,000 us now there was an entire section of robot vacuums and i've had a robot vacuum a roomba for a long time but this new one that i saw is really cool this was called Roborock Soros Z70, and he had an arm that could pick up items. An arm came out from the top, and it could pick up anything that weighed up to half a pound before cleaning. And right now, if you have a Roomba or any type of robot vacuum, it usually has a problem when things are in its way. So having a robot arm, pretty interesting. Now, number 10 was this thing called electric salt spoon. I'm not sure if this is cool or weird or what. Now, imagine you're on a low sodium diet. You can't have a lot of salts. So what this does is it shocks you with a mild electric current to make food taste saltier without actually having actual salt or sodium. Weird. I guess it could be practical for a someone on a diet, a restrictive diet for sodium. But when I saw some of the videos, you actually had to hold every bite for two seconds and then wait for it to send that electric current. Not sure what to think of this one, but couldn't keep it off the list. Now, Sony showed off a futuristic robotic suit straight out of a video game. They actually got inspired by a game called Horizon. And the point of this, I think, is a concept wearable that shows a world where we all have some kind of personal exoskeleton that will help us with all kinds of tasks. So it will improve our strength, mobility, and things like that. And water planting got an AI powered upgrade too. So imagine an AI that could monitor your moisture, your soil moisture, the sunlight the plant gets, the overall health of the plant, and it delivers the right amount of water to the plant. Now, just like the vacuums, there were also robotic lawnmowers. The one that really stood out to me was this one called Mamotion Luba 2. And this one actually handled an 80 degree slope right in front of me. And this one, depending on the model, could mow anywhere from a quarter to 2.5 acres, which is crazy. I thought seeing the display was just meant for really tiny yards. And it holds a charge up to 270 minutes. And CES is full of TVs. So one of the ones that really blew my mind, Hisense has a 163 inch micro LED 
consumer TV. This is the world's biggest TV right now. Now, I recently got a 98 inch Samsung, but this just blows that out of the water. But no pricing yet, but it's supposed to be available this year. Now, there were a ton of security cameras. A crazy one was this one called Paint Cam, which is an AI powered security camera that could use AI to recognize faces. So that's the normal AI part. But then if it recognized someone that shouldn't be there, an intruder, it could shoot paintballs at them. That's just weird. But you could literally pick from all kinds of different paintball options on their website to customize your paint can. Now, number 15 was exoskeleton suit. This is called Fit HV. And Kevin got to try this one out. And this is kind of like a backpack-like exoskeleton suit that could help with lifting support. And they had a test where you could lift something before you had it on and then try it on and lift it. And Kevin told me it was interesting, but felt really weird. <laughs> but I could see a lot of practical applications with these type of exoskeleton suit. Obviously, Sony showed a futuristic version of these too. So in the future, I could see a lot of people taking advantage of it, especially in the industrial settings. Halliday AI Smart Glass is another viral product here. This is super lightweight, 35 gram smart glasses here and they had real-time ai options like translations navigations they had teleprompter text and these are look like regular glasses but they got this little tiny display that projects information right into your eyes and you could get real-time updates with these and these are priced at 489 dollars once they get launched later this year samsung also released vision ai tv so this is across a whole lineup of their tvs and this is a suite of ai features that they introduced at CES 2025. So if you have an OLED TV, a frame TV, QLED TV, you're gonna be able to get some of these AI options. So that includes real-time subtitles, AI wallpapers, and smart things integrations. Basically, they're trying to make your TV your central hub for your smart home management to control all your different devices. And at number 18, LG had a transparent display so they showed off the world's first transparent and true wireless 4K OLED TV, 77 inch in size. And this is really, really cool to see in person. Now, how practical would this be? Well, at my house, not very, because most of us have the TV against the wall and seeing the wall, <laughs> that's not gonna be helpful. But in more futuristic retail situations, in museum, in some of the high-end installations, I could see this being really interesting. But price point right now, $60,000. So for my house, not a good fit. Razer Project Ariel is a concept gaming chair. And I really am looking forward to this. It's a concept, so I'm not sure if it's ever gonna get released, but hopefully it does get released because if you have a gaming chair, you know it probably gets too hot or too cold. Well, this gives you climate control. So with bladeless fans, it will help you cool the chair or heat the chair depending on your situation and, and it's something I'm really looking forward to. AI also came to grilling, something called brisket AI grilling, which is a grill that uses AI to optimize your cooking temperature, your timing. Basically the goal is to help you get perfectly done food and not worry about all the things that go into grilling. Now Govi had a huge display of LED lights. The one that stood out to me was this Table Lamp 2 Pro which combines Govi's LED lighting with JBL audio to bring a desktop lamp and speaker that syncs with your music. So if you're using Spotify, Apple Music, it will sync with that and create a dynamic lighting experience. Now, Samsung also had this really interesting gallery looking display and they introduced a Samsung Frame Pro. So the Samsung Frame is supposed to be a TV that doubles as a picture frame and it looks really nice in person. I don't have one, but in person, it looks really cool. The Frame Pro is the next gen version of that. Now, Sony also is getting into cars with an EV called Afila One. And this one is set to launch in 2026. Now, this one has all kinds of advanced tech, 40 sensors, including 18 cameras, LiDAR. It has level two plus autonomous driving capabilities. It's powered by a dual electric motor and it has 482 horsepower. Right now, the spec showed 91 kilowatt hour battery, which will give you a range of 300 miles. The starting price right now is $89,000. And it's not gonna be CES without seeing some kind of flying car. So right away, 
I checked out the Xpeng Aero HT. This is a six wheel hybrid flying car. And if you look at it, it looks like just a massive drone that could take people around. But I still don't know how far we are from actual flying cars that we could buy and use in real life. And I'll finish up with the most practical thing that I'm excited about that I hope to get my hands on called Project Digits by NVIDIA. This is an AI supercomputer that will sit locally on your desk. You don't have to use the cloud computing. You could use it right on your desk. And this features a petaflop of AI performance, 128 gigabytes of RAM and four terabytes of storage. And if you have never heard of petaflops before, is because in consumer computers, they don't use that kind of a thing to talk about the performance of a computer. In supercomputers, they do. Now, what one petaflop means is it could perform one quadrillion calculations per second. Okay, so if you want to run a local AI model, this could run a 200 billion parameter model. And what's really cool is you could stack these. So you could buy two of them, stack them, and then you could run 405B Llama model. That's the best available open source model right now. You could run that locally which is just mind blowing if you understand <laughs> the type of computing it takes to run a model that size. And this is gonna be available in May and it starts at $3,000. Now, obviously, if you wanna run the best AI models, normal computing is probably not gonna be able to do that anytime soon. So having a supercomputer, really looking forward to getting my hands on one, hopefully this year in May. If you don't mind taking a second to let me know in the comment which one really stood out for you from this list. Thanks again for NVIDIA for taking us to CES and sponsoring a portion of this video and I will catch you on the next video.